Hi, I'm Vishal Krishna, the founder and editor of the upstreamlife.com. I'm at Elasticon. We're living in a world of data. It's all about actions, outcomes, and corporations need outcomes. And you can do that with search AI, of course. I'm with Baha Azarmi, the VP, Global Customer Engineering at Elastic. And I hope you enjoy this podcast with him because he's going to talk about how search is changing everything. Thank you. So before you go any further, please like and subscribe, okay? But today I've got with me Baha. Baha, you know, thank you for being on the show. And well, thank you for welcoming me. And I love engineers. And you've been in Elastic for 10 years now. Yes. You've seen a generational change. Mm -hmm. And Gen AI is the order of the day. Yes. And Search AI is in the center of it, of innovation. So let's talk about uh, what is the roadmap to innovation with Search AI? Well, uh, we just announced just before this interview, uh, uh, Agent Builder. Yes. An agent builder is um, our platform for developers to build agentic AI. So uh, uh, from there, a developer can come and say, look, I have, um, you know, um, I'm working for a healthcare company and uh, I have uh, different workflows and processes that I want to automate. Right. Okay. Uh, and there is a, there is data involved into this. I need to uh, have something that will search through data, aggregate data, build uh, a data set uh, and an outcome that I can present to a user, or just send through different channels, email, notification in the mailbox, right? And so imagine all those workflows and processes that are implemented into a, in a, in a healthcare company or any type of industries. And so now we are giving the developer a way to come in the platform and build agents that will actually leverage all the search capability that we have created for decades now into Elasticsearch. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, it's one of the core functionality that we presented today, but there's more. Yeah, let's let's set some color. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of customers will be, will be watching this. We used healthcare as an example. Most of the CTOs in healthcare tell me they've got multiple apps, SaaS platforms, and you said something very important, that how can you get data with context, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how is it possible with Search AI? Right, uh, well, there is a... You know, when the ChatGPT came out, uh, there was a lot of uh, buzz around vector databases. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, a lot of different solutions mm -hmm. around vector databases came. And then the next iteration to this is like, oh, uh, we now need to uh, provide a rag to the, to the market. Uh, so really a conversation experience where solution of the market were integrating with LLMs. So you can have the same chat experience yes. than you have in uh, ChatGPT. But very quickly, the market realized that they're not relevant. Yeah. They're not relevant because you're not giving the context to the LLM. And by context, I mean your private data so that the conversation is uh, relevant for your business. And so at Elastic, one thing that really naturally came first, uh, we have the most used vector database in the world. Okay. Uh, on top of that, we have all the lexical, analytical, geo search capabilities that combine to vector database. So we have really all the search functionality to build a context that will deliver relevancy to AI. So now our customers are building very cool AI solution. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually even do that for ourselves. Our support uh, function at Elastic has an AI assistant where our customers are coming and asking for help to it. And guess what? We're using the context of you know, our knowledge base. We're using the context of their data. So that's relevant and we, uh, we see Tons of uh, uh, benefit for for not only our customers but also our engineers to focus on uh, other tasks and get you know productivity out of it. You know what I love today about the conference, uh, Elasticon, is the free courses that you gave to developers. Yes, and I would. I'm suggest, excited about this I, too. I'm excited because all yeah. the CTOs can now tell tell people to go learn yes. about Elastic. Yeah, and and the confusion is, I keep saying this right, generative AI is not about a dashboard but it has to have context again. Outcomes, actions yeah. is about relevance. Mm -hmm. And to do that, right, uh, does the business today come and work with engineers and say, okay, let's build cost-effective generative AI solutions. Yeah. What do you mean by cost-effective? I, I, I yeah. thought you'd do it because you want to drive value faster, better. Uh, listen, uh, you know, th there, is a, there is something that we are, we are almost religious about it yes. at Elastic, is that every single minor version of Elastic comes with an optimization. Yeah, correct. If we really come like narrow this down to the fundamental, any solution uses CPU, mm -hmm. disk, mm -hmm. and RAM, right? Yeah. That's the thing. And so we are paying a lot of attention as like how can we optimize all of that to our for our customers so it controls the TCO. So for example, when we talk about vector database, you heard about things like um, uh, BBQ, Acorn, right. 
and uh, the uh, the quantization we're doing to reduce the footprint in the yeah. RAM. So imagine now you have a certain amount of RAM, and as you go in the version of Elastic, we're reducing more and more and more, so you can do more with less. We do the same for logs. Someone that looks at um, the IT operations, someone that is in an SRE team, will have to ship logs into Elastic. Correct. And so as they ship, as they ship logs, they use disk. Well, we have logs DB. Right. We're reducing by uh, 10, 20, sometimes 40, sometimes even more percent the footprint on this, so you can do uh, more with less again. Okay, here's my question. Most of them are using hybrid clouds today. Yeah. Some of the retail customers of mine use hybrid clouds. Yeah. Um, they call it the tripartite cloud and all that that yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How does Search AI play a role here along with Gen AI now? Well, first, uh, we're very proud of uh, uh, being where our customers are. Whether you're a cloud customer, whether you want to deploy it, self-manage, yes. because you're in a highly regulated Absolutely. environment, you cannot do cloud. Absolutely. For us, it actually doesn't matter. We will meet you where you are. So if you want to do Kubernetes, you could do Kubernetes. We have a flavor for that. Uh, what it means then, we have, for example, customers that are running um, very complex SOC operation center, I mean, okay. uh, security operation center. Yes. And so uh, they're distributed. Uh, and so uh, they span on multiple um, uh, places in the world, the data centers. Yes. yes. But one thing they need is, say you have a vulnerability here, you want to see if it's, it exists there as well. Yeah. And so one of the things we have in the solution is called cross-cluster search. It's a, it's a very important feature because no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are actually hitting the, the solution, you can traverse everything. And it's completely transparent for you. Yeah. So, yeah. So my question now is, is it one size fits all for everybody? Or would you say we got to yeah. customize it? Uh, so would Elastic customize it? And also the partners listening to this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are a platform for developers. Absolutely. Like fundamentally, we're Correct. a search engine. We're a data store. We offer tons of features for developers to build application. Um, you know, we try to also uh, um, uh, listen to the market over the years. We saw people using us for logs, so we build an observability solution. We saw people using us for security, so we mm -hmm. we, we created a, a security solution. But there is an aspect of our platform that we have a hard time to categorize. It's just people coming and building stuff on Elastic. You know, I have people building uh, data store that are backing video games. Do you want, is that your favorite use case? Do you want to talk more about it? Well, there's, there is use case. What's the advantage of it? Well, listen, like there is a, so without getting into the details, just to keep confidentiality for, the, yes. for those customers, but there is like folks that are um, working with very complex demand and real-time demand on a high amount of unstructured data. And video games is one example. But imagine you have, um, you know, in a video game, you have the possibility of building your own um, uh, material skins and all of Correct. that. Uh, there is an aspect of uh, giving this liberty to your gamers without them um, um, uh, infringing any IP, mm. right? And so you don't want to you don't want to let them, uh, for example, build things that uh, a brand will not be happy with. Correct. And so uh, imagine this is a lot of images, a lot of text, uh, a lot of things that needs to be uh, uh, transformed into embeddings, put into a data store, and then make sure that your business rules and your queries are capturing uh -huh. everything that is um, uh, not compliant with uh, with what the company policy wants and make sure it protects themselves against uh, any right. uh, uh, litigation. And so those those types of phenomenal. use cases exist. This uh, is phenomenal. Yeah. You touched on security. Yeah. Um, very important in today's world. Yeah. Um, when I get search AI on, it's secure, of course. I have to trust it. But what what is the assurance that it is secure, it is it is, re it is not reactive, but prescriptive. Mm. How, how do you suggest uh, CTOs think of that when they sign up with you? Yeah, uh, listen, there is a, there is a, there's a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, very, for very long, we noticed in the market that a lot of security solutions um, are limited by themselves because they're not search engine, fundamentally. Yes. Uh, they've been built to, you know, detect things and... Uh, let the SOC analysts build a, you know, a solution that will back their SOC. Mm -hmm. But uh, some folks are compromising on, oh, I cannot bring that much data because my solution will not scale. Or actually, it will be very expensive for me to bring the DNS data, which yeah. are very verbose, yeah. right? For us, actually, uh, you don't have those limitations. We, we, we like to think about ourselves as a 
limitless uh, solution in terms of uh, storage and everything you can bring on. Because we give you full flexibility in storing your data into more expensive to very cheap storage so you don't compromise on having your data coming in and understanding and having a full coverage in terms of your cyber uh, security posture. But then on top of that, what's very important is what I showed yesterday, attack discovery and workflow. Um, we do not want to live into the back old days where you yeah. come and then you have a bunch of alert and yes. you have to figure out like, what am I supposed to do now? Like I have all those alerts. Yeah, that, that's a reactive process. It's it? a very reactive process and it's very subjective. It depends on your expertise. Yeah. And if you're bad at it, finished. Right. You and I gone. have different expertise yeah. and so we're going to address a problem in a different way. What we don't want... So those attacks are, uh, for us, because it, everything lives into the search engine, combined with AI, we're able to stitch everything together and give this complete view mm -hmm. on an attack. So uh, a SOC analyst doesn't have to think. They come and see immediately the attack if they want to think and if they want to guilt drill down, we will always give control to every user to do that. But we want to accelerate this and we're accelerating it like massively. Like we have ratios of, you know, 10x, 20x faster with, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with attack discovery. Talk about the engineering progress needed in your own team for this, right? Yeah. Uh, how anal about this are you when it comes to your developers contributing and your own team learning from these developers? How important is that for you? Uh, you mean in terms of uh, um, using our own solution? Yeah, yeah listen, uh, the, so I talked a little about the supporter team, for example, that is using uh, uh, the solution for their own need. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're customer zero of our security solution. Mm -hmm. Our InfoSec team is using uh, Elastic uh, to look at uh, the, the, the threats that are, you know, uh, um, the, the, the potential vulnerability we have and all of that. So they're collecting, you know, data like a customer will do. Um, uh, they're threat hunting uh, like a customer they do. So we pay a lot of attention uh, to what they do. So we learn immediately and uh, evolve the solution based on what they're seeing. Same thing for observability. Our SRE team is using observability to look at every the entire landscape of our cloud, right? Uh, yeah. Everything that we are providing yeah. from a SaaS perspective is something that we look at with Elastic. What are your thoughts on India? I'll give you some data. I checked the... Uh, registrar of companies and uh, the MCA rather, they have 200,000 startups in India now. Uh -huh. Can you yes. believe that? No, yeah. Look in 10 years, it. it's just gone from 5,000 yeah. to 200K. No, yeah, Isn't yeah. that a great opportunity? It's, it's, it's First, uh, I think it's a massive opportunity for the country. Uh, I think uh, it's just a matter of time before India becomes the probably second or first global power, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, when I see how much opportunity exists in this country combined with the amount of talent, right. it is amazing. Mm. Uh, and so every time I meet with customers, I'm impressed about the creativity uh, uh, of the developers here trying to solve very specific yeah. um, um, challenges. So there is a lot of momentum just from that, you know, demand and talent combined. Now, uh, there is a... The developer community, I think, here is looking for a solution that scale with their business. You know, yes. no longer than yesterday, I was in a meeting with a startup here that was looking for a search engine, uh, and they look at us uh, obviously because it's uh, it's it's one choice, uh, one of the choice they have. But they also ex experimented with other solutions, and so what they immediately saw is, look, our business needs are evolving very fast, like nightly. It's not a week thing or monthly. Like the startup are hyper aggressive in India. Yeah. It has to go like this. Mm. And so one of the things they told us is we really love your semantic uh, capabilities. And so we need to be able not only to move to you mm -hmm. very in a very agile way. We need your cloud and we need the help of your team yes. to help us, you know, ramp up on the semantics so we can offer that to, your, to uh, the, our customers immediately. And so this is something that we're very comfortable with. Not only we provide the right deployment because yes. uh, we want to keep people agile, but we also provide the right platform for developers so they get creative and we scale with their Great. business. Great. Last question. Enterprises, large enterprises. Uh, by, the, by the way, if you've got so far, you've got to like and subscribe. But this is for the CTOs of large enterprises. They're always concerned saying, oh, we'll try to build this in-house. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's my concern that, yeah. you know, innovation, you want to be innovating today. Yeah. At the scale of the startups or the developers yeah. or the community that you have, right? <laughs> What would you recommend them in terms? You've met a lot of customers, I'm sure, even the large ones. 
uh, about the buy versus build. Yes, buy versus build, exactly. Yeah, uh, there is a... Well, I, the, the beauty for us is that we fall in both pockets. Mm -hmm. You can build on Elastic and we will, hear, we will be here for you. And that's why also we have a massive community of users uh, and you can buy, uh, you know, out of the box solution. So, you know, I think uh, uh, there is two zones where uh, there is a preference for customers to buy, uh, specifically startups. Yes. Some, so, some they become enterprise customers. They have to go through compliance. Somebody are going to knock their door and say, hey, suck to, <laughs> suck to. And so uh, when it comes to uh, being agile and uh, having value immediately, imagine those folks probably already use Elastic. Now you're telling them, hey, we can give you the same solution immediately. And that actually is a pretty natural progression path or path for uh, you know, a startup that becomes an enterprise um, uh, company one day. So um, there is a, there's a natural land and expand motion uh, that happens for Elastic because people know about our technology, they trust it, and then they buy our solutions. Right, my last question. Forge the future. What does that mean to you? Uh, we, we are <laughs> because very, we all talk about the future yeah. without clarity. Listen, I think uh, the, the, the one thing that we are very keen on is uh, enabling our developer to build a feature with the right platform, the right developer tool. And so that's why, you know, we announced uh, Agent Builder. We announced Streams, a significant event. We want to make them, we want to facilitate the life of developer as much as we want, as, as we could. Um, and so... Um, this is, this is the most important thing for us is enabling agentic AI uh, yeah. for developer today through Agent Builder. That's probably uh, the most important side of building the future. Right. Thank you, Bob. No, thank you. You've been super and uh, we look forward to forging the future together. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, thanks.